So let's just start with uh, your full name and when and where you were born. <laughs> Raymond Edward Ozzy, Chicago, Illinois, uh, 1955. We would uh, do our programming on paper, punch it in into, you know, Hollerith cards and submit those card decks. You know, you would wait hours. You would just wait hours. Directly across the street from the digital computer lab, there was this other building. If you looked through the windows, there was this orange glow and there were just people sitting at rows and rows and rows of these things I'd never seen before. The system was called Plato, and these things were terminals. It was a mix between students who were, who were using those terminals, people doing programming, and people doing gaming. I just was fascinated by this thing. I lost interest, of course, in punched cards. Don Bitzer had this attitude which was, if you can imagine it, you can build it. It was the first time I was part of a team. There was the beginning of communications and online community. You started to get to know people very, very well at a distance. And we started to envision the system as a place, as opposed to just being um, a tool. I was assigned to work on a project with Gary Michael. He was remote. Occasionally I would get stuck and I would, I would term talk him in real time. He was just the worst typist you could ever imagine. I mean, it was just so frustrating. How could somebody who's such a bad typist write up these long specs? And he hosted a little party after the project to celebrate. And I drove to his house, went in, and the reason why he was typing so slowly is he's a quadriplegic. I had no idea. It made me question my biases. Because if I had seen him, I would have just been preoccupied with the fact that he's in this wheelchair. And yet I had seen the other part of him and his sense of humor. That really made me want to work on communication tools. I began writing the business plan for what would eventually become Lotus Notes. Mitch Kapor was great. I gave him the whole pitch about this notes thing. He said, look, I will commit to you one thing right now. I will commit to you one thing. You come to join us and deliver 123 version two. When that thing ships, I will figure out how to get your thing funded. I went to work for Lotus. The day that it shipped, Mitch came down and he said, you did your job. You did exactly what I had asked you to do. Dust off your business plan and let's talk about how to get it funded. December 7th, 84, I called friends of mine from college and the three of us uh, set out to, to building Lotus Notes. The product at its core was about people working together in an organization to get things done together. IBM had been looking at Lotus Notes. They viewed that it could be a pivotal asset. There was a hostile takeover made of Lotus by IBM. And I stuck around for two years and I began to get itchy. Groove's core mission was to enable people to do the best dynamic collaboration that they possibly could. The moment 9-11 happened, we had a, an information sharing problem. And the nature of Groove technology was that it didn't need central servers. We were purchased by Microsoft, who saw the, the dynamic collaboration being a good way to plug into the bottom end of SharePoint. Bill said, I'm thinking about leaving the company and giving full time to the foundation. What do you think about taking my role? We've built the organization in a PC-centric way. You, Ray, seem to have ridden the wave of change that our industry has had to help lead the company. I took on the role knowing that it was not a technology job, it was a transformation job. By 2009, I had gotten in motion pretty much everything that needed to get in motion. The vast majority of my career has been spent in computer-supported cooperative work to help an organizational goal or outcome. When people would come up to me and say, it's 2020 and I'm still working on Lotus Notes and I built a company of 30 people and I put my kids through college, that to me is the ultimate reward.